Hi, and welcome back to Shane's DIY. Uh, the purpose of today's video is to take the fear out of updating your uh, HTX radio. So many people goof up their radio when they're updating their HTX. They just get uh, caught up in all the different SD card contents and all these things, and, and you don't have to touch any of that. It's, it's really quite simple. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I have my way of doing it. Um, I've seen uh, different uh, YouTubers do their demonstrations on it. They're all great, they all get the job done, but uh, they can add unnecessary complexity to it, in my opinion. So I've got the uh, GitHub page for HTX up here. Uh, before I jump into that, and I'll show you where I get it, I wanna keep this as, as quick as possible, show you how quickly you can really update this radio and go back and forth between versions. It's, it takes a lot of the mystery out of it. There is HTX Buddy, which I don't use. It can be uh, easy, or it can simplify the process. You basically select the version you want, you select your radio, when it works, it works great. It's quick and easy. Uh, but I've had m numerous people have uh, contacted me. I get comments on my, uh, my YouTube videos, commenters uh, talking about how they had some trouble with it. Uh, I frequent a lot of the Facebook groups and forums, and I uh, try to offer technical support as much as I can. And uh, sometimes you just can't get your radio to talk to the PC, and then you're wrestling with that. So um, I don't like using Buddy personally. Uh, I do plug my radio into the computer, so you do need to have that uh, working but you could just as easily pull the SD card out, put it right into your computer, uh, and then you don't have to worry about any kind of interfacing with the radio. So let me go back to the page here. I'm gonna get rid of Buddy. If you wanna use that, great. If that's your go-to, then fine. Um, so if you go to the GitHub page, it's github.com slash edgetx, and you are gonna probably need to make an account, so you log in. If you don't log into it, uh, sometimes it won't let you uh, get to the, the files. The edgetx versions that come out are not paired up with SD updates, uh, sound card updates, widgets, uh, all these different uh, plugins for HTX are not uh, specifically uh, scheduled for release at the same time. They're not related. Those are all independent projects that people work on. They don't come out at the same time. So there's absolutely no reason for you to um, worry about all the SD card concepts. If all your stuff works, your sound files uh, work for you, uh, all the widgets that you use, get that out of your head that you have to mess with your SD card content. You do need to back up your SD card contents whenever you're making any changes. Um, you know, not that this process is inherently dangerous to your SD card, but um, you just want to have a backup of your SD card. Um, and then uh, front here, just go to this HTX link. And then over here on the right is always going to show the latest release. So you want to click on that, scroll to the bottom, and a couple things you need to do. If you, if you use Companion, you need to make sure that Companion matches your version of HTX that's on your radio. If they're not, if they don't, uh, if they're not the same version, you're gonna have complications, you're gonna have bugs, glitches, things are, something's not gonna work right and you're gonna have problems. So make sure that they match. There's different ones, there's one for Linux, one for uh, Lin uh, Mac. Uh, most of you, if you're using a modern, you know, Windows 10, Windows 11 PC, you're gonna use this uh, Win64 version of it. So download that and that's just your, your PC desktop software if you're not sure what that is it's called companion it's a nice way to, to you know check out things on your radio back it up stuff like that but not required it's just a you know a, a nice little application add on but what you're looking for here is just firmware 293 firmware if you're looking for the latest this is the latest stable release so click on that file it's going to ask you to save it save it somewhere that you can find it so i'm going to grab that it only takes a couple seconds to download it's very small then you want to pull up the folder that that was in, and then you're going to unzip it. So right click, and if I'm going too fast for you, just slow the video down, rewind it, play it again. You know, I don't want to, you know, make this video take, you know, half an hour just to do this five minute process. Okay, so right click on your zip file. Uh, and this is if you're on Windows, if you're on a different operating system, you're going to have to, you know, figure out how to do that one yourself. This is Windows 11. So right click on the zip file and click extract all. Hit extract, it's gonna extract all those files. Now within that folder, these are all the, the firmware binaries for every radio that it's compatible with. There's a bunch of them. So figure out which radio you've got, make sure it's right. For example, uh, one thing that goofs up some people is you, you mix up the T16 with the TX16S. So for example, here's a T16. That is not the same as the TX16S radio master that I use. So find the TX16S. Now this next step is something that I do. You don't need to do this. This is not required. This is just my personal preference. Uh, and the reason I do this is because I often will have 
several versions of firmware on my radio at any one time. So I can jump back and forth easily between different versions. If I'm troubleshooting for somebody, uh, somebody's asking for tech support and they have version you know, 284, uh, I can install that version real quick, run some tests and uh, show them some screenshots or something and, and then they can uh, you know, help them troubleshoot or do some diagnostic stuff. So what I do is I make a copy of this. So here's my TX16S. This last part of the file name here, uh, I'm sure it means something to the, the to the developers. I don't know what that means. It's a cryptic number, but uh, for me, I basically make a copy of that. I just hit copy, then I'll paste it, and then I'm going to rename it. And I just call it TX16S, and then I just call it like, uh, let's say, 293. And then I'll, if I refresh that, it'll put it back up there with the other one. So now these two files here are the exact same file, but when it's on my radio, if I have three or four or five different firmware files, I don't have to remember that cryptic code that the developers are using for that. I know it's version 293, so that's why I put that in there. Next step, we're going to plug in the radio. Make sure you power it on first. I'll, I'm going to show you some stuff on the radio here in a minute. I've got it plugged into the top port, plugged in my radio. You've got selections here, roll your to storage, like that. Now this just becomes a you know a drive on your rate on your computer. So now we're gonna be able to see it. Now this this radio still has version two seven one. So the, you know, the when you plug it in, it still shows this old. If you see up here, it says RMTX sixteen S. That's a, just a, basically a you know an internal drive that the uh, thing has. The newer versions of HTX don't. They no longer show that because it would confuse people. Um, if I double click it, there's a firmware bin file in there and then a firmware text file. Don't mess with any of that stuff. Uh, in newer versions, that no longer pops up. Uh, but over here, the, where it says USB drive, mine happens to be F. It be whatever on your computer. But you pull that up, and you're going to see your standard f file, fire, file and folder structure in here. <clears throat> I just need to grab that f firmware file that I just had. Let me back up. Okay, so here's my TX16S293 that I, you know, I renamed. So let me copy that, and then I'm going to go back over, and in my firmware folder. Right now, I just have the 271 in there and then a couple of multi-module different firmwares. <coughs> Paste it in there. Again, this is your SD card firmware, and I'm connected directly to the radio on this. If you had pulled your SD card out and put it in your computer, you would just find that drive on your computer. So now I've got both of those on there, okay? That's all I got to do, okay? So let's close that. Okay, now that I've uh, downloaded the firmware to the radio, I'm going to unplug it from the computer here. Just pull the cord out. Your screen's going to look a little different depending on what version you've got. Um, I'm starting uh, with 2.7.1. Anything prior to that or OpenTX uh, could be a totally different situation, so you're going to have to look into that one separately. If you get 2.7.1 or newer, all these steps should work just fine. Okay, so when you get a new firmware, um, it's not always required, but if you don't know for sure, it's always good practice to update the bootloader. If you hit the system button, we're going to navigate over to your uh, SD card contents. Newer versions, these the screen layout totally different. This is 271. Uh, go into your firmware folder, and now you can see. So you know that you can see what I mean. It makes it a lot easier to see what version. If I had a whole row of these, you know, 271, 284, 290, I could easily go right to the one I want to work with. Okay. So if you click on the binary file or the firmware file from in the radio when the radio is on, you're not going to install the firmware. All you're installing is the bootloader. So watch, if I click on that uh, 293, this is the one I want to update to, flash bootloader. So you're not installing the firmware, so don't think that your radio is going to be updated after you do this. So um, so we're on flash bootloader. I'm going to click it. It says flash device, flash successful. Okay. Hit the uh, return button. So nothing's going to be different. If I navigate over here to the information page, you can see I'm still on 271, so I haven't really done much yet. I've all, all I've changed is the bootloader. Okay, let me back out of this. Okay, I'm going to power off the radio. Now, this is pretty standard on all the radio masters. Um, you know, TX16S, Boxer, probably all of them. Hold the T1 and T4 in while you power it up. Okay, so now you can see at the top here, my bootloader is 2.9.3. And I want to I want to write firmware. This is where you update the firmware. So you see at the bottom here, I've still got 271 is what's installed. So I'm going to hit write firmware. 
I'm going to navigate down to the one I want, 293 in this case. I open it and then long press. And now it's going to do the update process. Okay, so it's done. Now I'm going to hit the return button again. Go down here to exit. Now it's going to reboot. Now if I go into the system menu, you can see my icons are totally changed. Now I've got the new one. Now if I navigate over here uh, to the information page, you can see now I'm on 2.9.3 Providence. Uh, and that's all you got to do. You do not need to worry about your widgets and stuff. The HDX is like your uh, operating system on your computer. Um, and all your, your widgets, your uh, programs and stuff on the, the radio are like your applications, your you know, Microsoft Word, you know, uh, Excel, things like that. You're not going to delete all that stuff and restart just because you put a new version of Windows on your computer. This is not going to change your models. Uh, if you have a model in there, obviously anytime you do a radio change before you go flying, you want to hook up to that model and make sure that your sticks and everything you know, your buttons, all your programming, all your delays, you know, all the functions make sure that they work before you go fly your airplane. But really, you should do that anytime you go out to fly your plane, regardless of if you change your radios. You know, pre flight your airplane, but make sure that everything, all the controls work as expected before you take it up in the air. You know, there's some other things that are updated. Um, you know, the multi protocol module, if you're using that, if you have a 4 in 1, if you have ELRS, it's different, but. Um, if you have the 4-in-1 module for the multi-protocol stuff, you want to make sure that's updated, but that is released at different times. It doesn't come out in conjunction with HTX releases, so they don't need to be associated with each other. Uh, things like the uh, forward programming, for example. Um, this one just still just has the forward programming version 0 0.2, which is extremely limited. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I've got brand new firmware for that. That obviously you want to have that updated, but if, if I've been using my radio and I've got those things updated, they're not going to change because you update the firmware. Those things are still going to be in there and work just fine. Your model should be fine. Uh, any widgets, sounds, all that stuff can stay the same. Uh, go through the change logs, of course, uh, that you see on that web page when you're on the GitHub. You can go through all the change logs and see you know when things were released, any bugs that were fixed. If anything applies to you, certainly go get that that thing. But that's all you've got to do is get that file. Flash the bootloader, and then install the firmware with through the bootloader. That's it. Any questions? You know, let me know. Um, but I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. You can seriously do this update in you know minutes.